Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome to book review number 23. So let's get straight to it. Uh, this week I am going to be reviewing Cold Beer and Crocodiles, uh, A Bicycle Journey into Australia by Rolf Smith. Now first of all, I really enjoyed this book, but it was a little bit misnamed. Um, he really drinks relatively little, and although when he's in the north there's like some vague threat of crocodiles, he really doesn't see any, and they don't really, are not the main focus of the book. What it really should have been called is um, Highways and Roadhouses, or something like that, uh, um, Roadhouses and Farm Stays. Um, because what the what the book really is is sort of covers a little bit of urban Australia, but mostly pastoral uh, Australia, um, and just the different characters and history of the place. Um, to give a little background, he starts in Sydney, uh, and then does a complete circumnavigation counterclockwise of the Australian continent. So Sydney, um, Blue Mountains. Brisbane, then it kind of cuts into the inland and goes to like Birdville and some of the areas around uh, where Burke and Willis uh, died. And then he went back to the uh, coast, um, the northeast coast, the tropical coast, Cairns, Townsville, those areas. Um, then through Mount Isa and the Gulf region up along the top end uh, of Australia, like Darwin in that area. Through the Kimberley, through the Pilbara, um, down the west coast of Australia, uh, Perth, uh, Albany, that area, uh, that wine area, then across the Nullabar Plain. Uh, he actually didn't go to Adelaide, but uh, you know, basically through South Australia, down through Victoria, and then back up through the Blue Mountains to Australia. Um, okay. That was kind of extensive. What I really enjoy about, enjoyed about this book was um, just the straightforward, down-to-earth way it was told. There was no um, uh, pretense for what he was trying to get across. He just observed. Um, that being said, what he observed uh, was both entertaining and kind of the medium level of depth that he went into, not depth that was so wonky that you couldn't, it wouldn't be enjoyable, but uh, it's kind of the the, hit, the light history of the different regions that he went to, um, along with the different characters. Now, I thought this book was uh, a good all the way through, and uh, like I said, he does cover some urbanist sections, and in the urban sections, um, he kind of meets some interesting people and tells their story and then also tells the story of the city but because you can never meet any certain person every single person and say the gold coast you can say things about the gold coast but you can't really um, um, speak to it from first-hand knowledge beyond a very small sample size of what goes on there but what i felt was uh, really entertaining was when he went into the outback and uh, the more desolate regions of australia um, particularly I felt the, uh, the Gulf region, uh, Gulf of Carpathia, um, where I forget their names, but, uh, he went, I think it was like, or something, it doesn't matter. Uh, he met some people just by happenstance, uh, along the road and they asked him if he wanted to pull over and wanted a beer. Uh, this is where beer does apply. Uh, and they offered him a beer, uh, and they got to talking because they didn't know each other at all. Uh, the guys are talking, and eventually this guy that pulled over for uh, uh, Roth, <laughs> the author, uh, invited him to go camping with them, and he said uh, they found this little water hole uh, up in an area that's mostly desert, but because it was kind of in a sink, it had some tropical vegetation, and it was almost sort of like a lost world. Uh, that was really interesting, and just talking about them fishing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then when he goes along in the top end and just kind of explaining some of the fruit pickers uh, who uh, seem to be the loose change of the world um, that just kind of migrate there and uh, 
you know, it's certainly not a huge populace. I know the populace of the Kimberley is like 40,000. I think the population of the northern part of the Northern Territories is probably less than 150,000, something like that. Um, so very small, but also just a lot of kind of characters involved just because of um, both the, the, the type of industry that goes on there, which tends to be a lot of like mining and heavy labor, as well as um, sort of seasonal agriculture. Uh, and in Australia, unlike in say the United States where I'm from, uh, I can't rely upon a huge underclass of, um, let's be honest here, Mexicans. So you just get this whole range of Australians, Europeans, uh, gruff people, idealistic backpackers, uh, you know, the whole range uh, of some places you stayed at. Um, and then what I, uh, the last area that was kind of along the north, northern coast was uh, the area of the Pilbar and Kimberley. Uh, the Kimberley was really good. It was kind of an extension of the Northern Territories. But what I particularly enjoyed was the Pilbara, where he went on these 500,000 acre ranches that would have like 10 people on the entire ranch. Now, I don't know if you know what 500,000 acres is, but it is a huge area. Um, and I guess it just appeals to the uh, romantic in me or the idealist in me that, uh, uh, you know, there are these these people that still kind of live like, I guess the old west would be in the United States. You know, people don't really raise cattle in the United States. Um, fr uh, yeah, free range kind of uh, roaming around. I mean, there is free range, but it's kind of like very controlled. But these people are free range, not out of um, um, some sort of angle or uh, uh, because they can make a greater profit from it but because the land is so dry that they have to let these animals range free in order to have enough uh, sustenance to survive. So it really is sort of like, uh, you know, guy on a horseback, or in this case, guy in like a dune buggy, um, just riding around huge tracts of land uh, and making sure all his cattle are okay. It's just, it's very romantic. But then also like he talks about the hospitality of these people. And you know, I mentioned the cities and the uh, inability to uh, uh, really connect. Now he does do good analysis of the cities, but really sort of uh, uh, get your get your hands in there on the cities uh, in such a limited time frame. I feel he really does um, grasp his hands on the countryside in the limited time frame that he's given. Um, I guess I mentioned early on uh, it should be called uh, Roadhouses and Highways. Um, definitely some of the roadhouses he went to were uh, gruff, um, ribald, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, there was a lot of uh, just sort of like tart, tart service, you know, like uh, uh, this guy isn't hard. What is he doing in our neck of the woods? Or uh, you know, just kind of a scowl on your face, or. Uh, you know, these are the people that are serving you, or maybe there's a trucker across uh, across the way that's driving a, a three cab truck, three, three, three cab, four cab, four cab truck uh, across the outback, and uh, he's just a good old boy or whatever, and uh, that really kind of, uh, I don't know, I found it interesting. You know, you, he, he included a lot of, a lot of little tidbits, like uh, in Australia, the grills on uh, the front of the trucks. Um, you know, in the United States, if uh, even if a deer hits a truck, it'll, the truck will really kind of go through it, but it'll smash it and the truck will kind of have to readjust. But the grills in Australia, because they have all these kangaroos, uh, are outlaid like this, um, with these huge, I guess it's sort of like protrusions that go at different levels. And so when a kangaroo hits it, like the truck literally just smashes right through the kangaroo and he said that was one of the things driving along the highways is you would see carcasses all over the place i mean not to be too grisly but it certainly uh, paints a picture for you um let's see what else is that like well he talked a lot about uh once again back to the top end um you know the uh, wet season was right before uh was okay so like the wet season is kind of the brawling season because it's so hot and the humidity is so bad we're talking like 
110 degrees with like 95 percent humidity and you know just kind of like in this gruff outback area they like to really uh go out and bang um you know these uh backwards people uh, <laughs> uh and he went there like the month before it started raining which is kind of the relief period so he was there right in the middle of uh, the build-up which is like the fighting period that was really interesting. It's kind of his race against uh, the thunderstorms to go south. I thought by the pacing of the book, he was going to get drenched for sure. And I think he did once, but it wasn't, uh, uh, he wasn't along the coast at that point where he got it like really, really bad. Um, let me think, what else is there? Oh, I guess, you know, there's stuff about like the Pil, uh, Pil or not the Pilbara, the Nullabar Plain um, along the Great Southern Bight that uh, is just so desolate, even a little bit more, maybe desolate than the north, which has at least some industry, but there's just nothing in the south. I mean, he had to ride like 100 miles to get from one roadhouse just to get to the next roadhouse, and just barely was able to get enough water. And you know, he tells stories like, uh, because the roadhouses are so isolated, um, they sell water and they can just jack up the prices because there's not another roadhouse for 100 miles. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna die of thirst no you gotta pay these people you know and then maybe that's a little highway robbery but uh you know it's uh certainly adds to the character of course he also mentioned uh, all the hospitality he felt along the way um and that the instances where um people really did try to chip him i shouldn't say chip but try to tr treat him bad um were minuscule in comparison to all the hospitality you know there were multiple instances of people uh without him asking, offering to take him into their homes, uh, be it in uh, the suburbs of Brisbane, you know, like urban area, or these huge uh, farms out in the middle of nowhere, uh, uh, or, you know, not really farms, cattle ranches. Um, yeah, so I don't know uh, what more I'm really gonna say, but, uh, well, I guess, I guess the one area I didn't mention is uh, the wine region and uh, kind of the southern uh, southeastern Australia you know he went to actually didn't go to Adelaide but he went to the wine region which he said was very quaint and kind of like a Napa Valley-ish but not as snooty um, and then also sort of the uh, uh, Great Australian Road or uh, Great Pacific Road basically the the one where the 12 apostles are south of uh, Melbourne and he also mentioned going through the Blue Mountains and uh, kind of experiencing, I think it was Anzac Day or some sort of Veterans Day at uh, what is the equivalent of their uh, like Lions Club or Veterans um, group or whatever in these uh, rural towns. And uh, even though it would seem like a small thing, how it just moved the veteran, how he was moved by the veterans' uh, uh, honor and service on those days. Um, and of course, then he made it back to Sydney. Um, overall, I gotta wrap this up because I only got two minutes. This is a uh, great book. Um, if you want something that will provide insight, definitely provides insight, um, provides a personal look, uh, but also is very, very accessible. Like, I read this book in, I don't know, like three days, which is, believe me, that's, that's very fast for me. And I read it so fast just because it was enjoyable, it was accessible, but provided a lot of information. Um, and really, you did feel like you were riding along with him on this bicycle uh, through all the trials, but also through all of the uh, uh, great personal interactions uh, along the great continent of Australia. Um, yeah, I don't think I can say any more than that. I guess this is uh, Camel Beach uh, in Broome, uh, one of the areas. He said, I'll leave it with this, one of the areas where there was a great sunset uh, that uh, relaxed him uh, at the end of his time, or at uh, the end of his days, about halfway through his uh, hectic, uh, uh, draining, yes, very, very draining bicycle ride uh, that I wouldn't say it nearly killed him, but it, uh, you know, it really took a lot out of him. These sites like this really made it all worth it, and the people that he met along the way really made it worth it. Um, yeah, it's a great, great book. I don't know what more to say. I'm getting carried away. Check it out. Read it. Cold Beer and Crocodiles, A Bicycle Journey into Australia by Roth Smith. All right.
See you guys.